hosted in conjunction with Chris Media. The CEO interview series allows investors to hear directly from the CEOs leading the companies featured on Wholesale Investor. Enjoy the interview and reach out via the details in the description. Hi and welcome to another Crisp Q&A. Today I'm joined by Luke McFarlane, founder of Vicara Capital. Thank you for being here today, Luke. Thank you, Sydney. Thanks for the time. Luke, just to get started and set us on the right course, how about you inform the audience and myself about who Vicara, who Vicara Capital is, a high-level overview, um, just, to, just to get us on the right way today? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Vicara Capital is a Web3-focused uh, liquid token investment portfolio or investment fund. Um, what we're looking to do is apply traditional fundamental bottom-up analysis into the digital asset ecosystem uh, and give investors an exposure to this platform or this ecosystem as it grows. So Luke, um, especially operating in this space, we, we, we want to know more about the investment methodology. You mentioned a few key things there about in, in investing in liquid digital assets. Can you ex maybe expound upon that and why that is a unique investment methodology in, when it comes to investing in digital assets in the Web3 space? Yeah, sure. I mean, it might be worth, Sydney, just quickly giving Mark, my partner, my own background, uh, just to, mm -hmm. as it applies to that question. Um, so I've been in traditional financial markets for 16 to 17 years. Um, I started in corporate finance. Um, I, I moved to New York and spent eight years over there. Uh, the first uh, couple of years were on the sell side with Macquarie before leaving there to join the buy side. Um, and I worked at hedge funds, Millennium Management, which is a $55 billion hedge fund in New York. Um, I moved from there to run a full portfolio manager seat at uh, Valley Asney Asset Management, which is about $16 billion at the time. Um, and I spent the last few years back in Sydney at Platinum Asset Management, which is about a $20 billion US hedge fund. Um, Mark's background is more private, private markets. Um, spent a couple of years in Vesco Funds Management. He moved to a hedge fund. He went back and did his MBA at University of Texas. Um, spent seven years in investment banking at Merrill Lynch. Uh, before getting poached out of there to Tan Capital, uh, to a $10 billion private equity business. Um, he left there to, to start an entrepreneurial endeavor. He uh, went out and built a, an equity, uh, it's a, a royalty streaming business uh, focused on base metals. He started at about $2 million and took it up to three, 300 mil, uh, listed on the TSX before uh, joining Macquarie. And he's been writing structured credit off their balance sheet for the last four years back here in Sydney. So. To answer your question, what we're really trying to do, Mark and I, is, is go about and use fundamental investment uh, philosophies or, or investment processes that we've developed over our tenure in, in uh, capital markets um, and apply that to digital assets. And what I mean by that is um, let's go and find businesses that have a, a structural reason to exist that can compete against the centralized incumbents that are currently dominating these industries. Um, that have fundamental data that we can go and analyze, whether it's onboarding, whether it's, you know, um, number of active users, um, data stored, whatever we're looking for, and then fundamentally back into a valuation principle or, or thesis or framework that actually makes sense for us to own these tokens at certain times. What would be an example of that exact analysis? So if we were to look at uh, centralized incumbents in the market at the moment, perhaps you could give the audience a real life example or, or as to what you would suggest would be um, one that is ripe for disruption and would have an, a, a great Web3 alternative worth investing in. Just as an example here today. For sure, yeah. I mean, look, one of the, one of the most fascinating ones that people uh, don't really know about, when I say people, centralized incumbents, the largest 5G network in the world right now is a decentralized token called Helium. Um, you know, it has been building itself out for, for years. Um, it has, you can basically drive a truck these days from Portugal to Greece, and you don't have to disconnect from the 5G network. That's how dense this network has become. Um, it's putting it across Australia, across the United States, it's all the way through Asia. Um, and what's super interesting about that are all of the different things that spawn from that. And what I mean by that is, is if you can get on and access uh, 5G in your local area, all of your Internet of Things uh, comes off that or, or, or actually can, be, can lever that network. But so can telecommunication networks, so can delivery systems, so can, you know, a whole host of various other um, applications. And so what we go and do with a, a network like Helium is we go and understand how quickly that network is building out 
what the demand side looks like for those services, how much people are paying for those services, um, you know, how tokens are being held, stored, invested in, um, and what the supply demand of those tokenomics look like so that through time we can effectively get a good idea whether this network is deficient in, in, in one of its legs, whether it's, it's, it's not enough demand, uh, or whether the actual um, tokenomics will effectively not allow this network to progress post uh, you not being able to compensate people to onboard. So uh, that's one example. I mean, you go around the, the loose things like Spotify, you know, why they take 90 cents in every dollar uh, of revenue to come onto the platform and only pay out 10 cents to their artists it makes no sense. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect platform to decentralize. Um, Google search, you know, why I have to see everybody's ads and not be paid for it doesn't make any sense. I mean, we talk a lot about pre-search here, um, which is a, a really interesting token that is uh, effectively trying to replace that search function. Um, and, and the list goes on. You know, we've, we've got a portfolio of, you know, about 50 of these tokens uh, that we think have fundamental use cases and are going after, um, I guess, oligopolistic industry structures with really high margins that effectively can be passed back to the stakeholders of these networks. What, what I love about um, what I'm hearing is it sounds like there's a, each of these Web3 companies are undergoing a hype test and you're actually revealing or unveiling the actual technological superiority they have to the incumbents in the space, which is something not many people are aware of. And you've just highlighted there the 5G network play with Helium and you know helping people understand that you know this blockchain technology when it comes to multi-party party data exchange is actually superior to a lot of these centralized databases already in use, you start to see that how this will sort of transcend the hype. Is, is, is that something that you would say is a clear cut focus of this fund? And I guess that would be your unique positioning to a potential investor is saying, well, we are your eyes and ears in this space, um, but we'll also cut through the fluff and show you what will stand the test of time. I think that's exactly our point of difference. It's, you know, people can debate whether something like a Bitcoin is, is needed in the world, whether you need to take capital away from sovereign entities, whether it's a central bank or a government. We're not here to talk about that. We don't even want to go down that path. What we want to do is find businesses that uh, have a use case, can compete head to head uh, with centralized businesses and fundamentally offer a better service offering or a cheaper price point or you know, uh, allow IP to, to sit with their hands or, or the, whole, the creators of that IP effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about the, the kind of the stakeholders in the industry, there's users and either they need to pay less, get a better experience or get more certainty around their data or their privacy. You've got content creators which want to own what they create, they want to be paid for what they create and they want to be attributed with what they create and then you've got advertisers and those advertisers want to not have to pay to play effectively. You know, an advertiser right now pays about 40 or 50% of margin to a Google or an Amazon just for the mm. privilege of, of advertising versus in a Web3 system or, or network, they don't have to pay anybody. They pay directly to that user uh, that, that, that looks at their ad effectively. So, um, yeah, no, exactly. Like we're here about businesses. We want to do fundamental analysis. We want to understand um, how these businesses evolve and they're tracking through time. And, and as I said, I think the biggest, well, I haven't said it, but the biggest risk to a centralized global equity allocation today is decentralization, particularly over the next five years. Um, and right now there is no way of allocating into decentralized markets without a fund like Bacara. And that's what we're trying to offer um, our clients. So let's talk about the client journey here. And let's suppose somebody is interested um, in, in participating in the fund, what's the journey look like and how can they get involved? Yeah, so we um, have finished our PPM. We will launch this month. Um, they can get involved by, by contacting myself or Mark Riccio, my partner, um, just luke.mcfarlane at vicara.com and, and, and we can uh, talk them through uh, our offering documents and, and, and what our product looks like and how, how it looks. Um, but really, it's, it, it works very much like a global equities allocation, um, which most people have invested in out of the super funds or, um, you know, with their financial advisors. Um, it's, it's simply a matter of allocating the capital in and we will then go and, and allocate for them. It's a Cayman fund. Um, it's $100,000 minimum US. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really quite a simple process. Excellent. 
Well, it, it definitely is. Um, it, it allows for exposure to blockchain technology and markets on decentralized markets um, in, in a way that is, is quite rare. You obviously got um, a, a method of analysis that, that does cut through that hype, as mentioned, um, and the team with the fundamentals and the traditional um, uh, understanding of businesses to know exactly which ones will uh, stand the test of time. I'd love to know what your thesis is on the next six to 12 months in this market. Where do you think um, we're going in the decentralized market? You touched on a few sectors that are ripe for disruption, um, but perhaps as a, as a parting message, um, what do you see as a six to 12 month outlook for the Web3 space? Yeah, look, if you rewind six, 12 months, um, you've had a phenomenal period for a lot of these assets in terms of the amount of money they've raised. That will allow these teams to continue to build new products over the next 12 or 18 months. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them have a very good runway. Um, obviously, the macro overlay has been very difficult. Um, you've got the Fed tightening into what is a clear slowdown in economic growth. You've got a whole host of concerns in Europe. Um, China's economy remains weak and they have not been able to kind of get themselves out of the real estate uh, decline that they've seen in the last 18 months. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, what's very clear to me, uh, at least, is that this will come to an end. There will be resolution. Um, I don't believe that the Fed can continue to hike or will need to continue to hike into perpetuity because it's pretty clear that inflation is rolling already, uh, or at least moderating. Um, and if that's the case, there's, you know, an outlook that between now and the year end, we will see inflation peak and, and roll uh, mm. pretty materially. We will see the Fed come to an end or at least pause in terms of its hiking cycle. Um, and we will actually revert back to talking about how we get these economies moving again post what has been a, a global slowdown. Um, and, you know, in that environment, I think that, you know, a little bit of risk will return, a little bit of um, interest in, 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 in getting some exposure to these assets or actually supporting uh, what a lot of these entrepreneurs in Web3 are doing will return. Uh, you know, and one of the best things for us is we're launching this fund into what will be a, a, a very clear bottom for us over the next five years. And so, you know, I think if we had talked about raising money six months ago, it would have been a much harder ask to get people to give us money. Um, but, you know, when you've got an ecosystem that's down 85, 90% from the peak, um, you know, we are truly investing in some phenomenal uh, valuation opportunities. And it really is about actually just making sure we're around to see the bottom. We've got our capital uh, sort of slowly being allocated in. I mean, I might just tusk a touch on our risk framework here a little bit. Um, we're here to run a diversified portfolio. Um, we've got very defined cash weightings. We've got very defined position sizing limits. Um, you know, we're not just getting this money and, and, and jamming it straight into the market. What we do is we, we have our macro overlay, we have our business bottom-up financial analysis done, and then we're picking our valuation range where we want to be fully allocated. And so, you know, between now and year end, we are going to see the bottom and we're very confident that we're going to be able to actually allocate into that bottom, which, you know, if you're allocating us money today, then you should hopefully, uh, you know, be able to realise some of those, some of those sort of um, the benefits of investing into the bottom over the next few years as we see things turn. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for your insights both into Vicara Capital and to the market today, Luke. Uh, obviously, best of luck with this venture. Um, and for those who are interested in speaking or reaching out to Vicara Capital, we will have their details in the description. And again, thank you for joining me and best of luck. Thanks a lot, Sydney. Appreciate the time. Thanks. Thanks.